Mm. There you go. Yeah, Emperor Palpatine laugh. What's up, everybody? It's just Rob today. I know if you didn't read the description, you're probably highly disappointed. I'm surprised we even got this many people on with just little old Rob. Um, my bestie is sick and it makes me sad, but I do. Sarah, hope you're feeling better if you're watching. Um, she started feeling sick yesterday. No, and let's let's this is probably going to be some other conspiracy theory. But yeah, she started going down yesterday and she's hurt and now her daughter. I know Stacy's recovering, so I don't know what's going on out there. Uh, maybe it's the change of weather. I don't know. But people are sick. And if anybody on the side is sick, I hope you are resting and healing up. So let's say hello. Um, we did have one taker. I threw this out there. And if you didn't read the description, um, anybody wants to come on today. Uh, almost anybody that wants to come on today can join us. We'll have an actual human discussion. All right, so we got the man who is also recovering, Stacy Telich. We have Danny. How are you, Danny? Uh, let's see, they had a whole big combo going. We got uh, Stacy, Sandra. How are you, hon? We've got Faye all the way from the the left coast. We've got Mr. Mark Brown. He's here, but he's not here. He's trying to listen. I get it. People have to work. Um, Jet Pro Steve, who I owe him. I owe something still. I owe a lot of people stuff. We got Michael Greer. I mean, it must be something about the eclipse. We got Greer on a Wednesday. We've got Big Daddy Andy. And no, I'm not doing the fun little pop-ups because it's just me today. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Like, oh, Adam, we have Adam. That's a fantastic picture of you, Adam. We have Jenny Davis. Do, 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 do. Who am I missing? Oh, Lisa Contraband Phillips. We've got Joby, who will probably be uh joining us here soon he has a link jenny yeah we're gonna talk about this shirt um oh look at that we have sicky watching recovering hello we hope you're better have some hot tea um we have p3s probably steven adam's here to look at me i get it makes sense we have jay diz the man we have the beautiful Denise Pack. Ed Road, my man, all the way from Red Mill, New Jersey. Uh, let's see. Court Peterson? Courtney Peterson. You never know who she is, depending on which jet, uh, account she's on um, when she's in jail. Uh, Facebook jail, that is. Leanne, hi. We have the April. Busset or Busset. I've heard it pronounced a couple of different ways. I call you Busset. It just sounds fancier. Um, Denise, you have this giant care package coming. Everyone stop it. I'm going to get to the shirts and we're going to talk about that. A man needs to know his limits and, and my limits are have been reached. We have Kaylee. Sarah saying thank you to everyone because she's resting her body and soul and courtney's um and courtney's uh she is in jail she can comment she she just can't post first way so beset thank you i am correct as usual so here we are it's wednesday i'm winging this thing without my wing wing man wing woman i don't know what the right term is but um yeah, and it's been one hell of a week. So let's talk about the shirt, folks. This is part of the Black Tea Society, which I have um, sort of, sort of, I drive have admittedly dropped the ball on. I'm rushing to get this all caught up. We did find a new method um, for getting some of these shirts done. I owe several people a couple of shirts, and they're all getting stacked up right now. Um, I'm handing that piece off because, you know, 
Um, we keep getting thrown these curveballs and things pull me away from getting this shit done. So I'm handing it off. And the folks that work with me uh, know me know that that is a tremendous achievement to get me to hand something off. So Black Tea Society is going to kind of get a, a reset um everybody's going to get caught up real soon here we're going to change the the way the billing is going this is confusing people and it even confuses me but this is and was supposed to be the january shirt right um so i did a proof of concept i know i look strange doing this um but this is the the route we're taking for some of my hey hey thomas oh adam i know you like that shirt Hey, Thomas Bolger, um, new to the crew. So this is the route we're taking for some of the shirts. Some of them will still be, you know, silk screen, but this is called DTG. It's direct to garment. These are printed and it's, um, they're pretty badass. And we can, the problems, they're a little more expensive. So I had to, or a lot more expensive, really. I had to find kind of a way to do this without losing money. So there we are. These are in production for, the January orders and then the folks that have been waiting. Um, I'm going to catch you up. I'm going to catch you up. I promise. Um, hello, Trevor. So yeah, it's been a hell, hell, hell of a week here as we rush towards tax season. Um, I'm trying to get my shit together so that I can not stress about that, but we've been busy more curveballs. Um, we did, we, we removed alive. We're not going to get into that today. Um, I made a couple of new haters somehow, but it's all going to come to light here real soon, folks. How about that opening video? Um, Mike Danger Castro created yet another masterpiece. Um, that one really gets me in the feels, right? It does just the music and bringing that shit all together and the visuals. Um, guys, I hope to see all of you at the soiree in october Our ticket sales are, are happening um we're going to talk about a little bit about the vendors and you know we have several um more than a handful of vendor requests already there's only 12 tables folks so if you're a team if you're a crafter um if you have a product that you need to uh, that you want to put in front of a lot of people very exclusively um now's the time to get those in we're going through all the applications um, we are trying to um, distribute, you know, the slots so that we don't have 12 different candle makers all in the same space, right? We want we want it to be fair to everybody. So look for an email real soon. Um, that's right. The wolf pack is coming. Um, you know, there's some special invitations going out. There's a lot happening. So the vendor piece will be next. Um, there will be some amazing amazing vendors at this thing there are sponsorships available if you want to support but cannot make it um yeah there's a lot going on with this thing it's a big deal folks and again you know the intent of the whole thing is to bring the community together for a night of hanging out talking celebrating sharing stories making friends um maybe burying some hatchets who knows what's going to happen but it's going to be a sick an amazing night we've you know, got dancing you've got a cash bar you've got um the five inch guns i mean just hearing those go off right so uh but we're gonna get into detail about that soon um yeah so that's that and again to anybody that might not be feeling well i'm sorry stay stay unsick get unsick but let's bring up Joe B and I threw it out there. If anybody wants to pop in and we'll, we'll chit chat and we'll see what Joe B and next of kin, um, have been up to, um, hold on. What's, what's Adam talking about? Oh yeah. You guys are going to, there's going to be, um, it's going to be like Greco Roman wrestling half. Yeah. I don't know what's going to happen. Um, Joe Epp, how are you buddy? All right, let's bring Joe B up and let's see what's new with Mr. Joe from Next of Kin, Paranormal. He and his son, Dom, um, joined up with Get Haunted and then later created Knock. Yes, we did. Yeah, you yeah, did. did. And it was all part of joining up and hooking up with you guys that actually inspired us to create Knock so, and create Next of Kin. So, um, 
this coming April, it's actually going to be a year um, since we did our first investigation with Get Haunted and you, Rob, at um, really? really, oh yeah, at actually at White Hill Manor. So oh yeah, oh yeah, and we're we're going back to celebrate our one year anniversary with you guys there on the sixth. So oh, it's, wow. it's something pretty special that Dominic and I decided we were going to do. So yeah, but I mean, until that night, Dom and I were really kind of considering whether we were going to keep forging forward with this and kind of doing it because we were with a couple different other venues and we went to a couple different other places and we just weren't feeling it. And then man, going to your event night and day. So thank you. So, man. Look, we didn't put you, we did not put Joe up to this. I know no, what you're no, watching or no. thinking. Um, so Adam has a good question here. I, I know you did a solo, your first solo last week, right? Yes. How was it? It, it was very, very interesting. Um, the people that own the uh, George Taylor mansion, um, they were there with us the entire evening. Um, Jason and Candace, uh, I don't know if they own it or if they're just the curators, but they're there all the time. Candace said she was only going to hang around about an hour and we had so much activity. She stuck with us all night long. Really? Um, it, uh, oh my God. It was popping off. Like you would not believe. Um, we heard footsteps upstairs, like they were having a dance party up there. Um, at one point it was the lady sitting room. And Candace said, no matter what anybody does, they can never get any evidence of anybody in this room. People try to take pictures. Something happens with their cameras. So I took the good old fashioned Polaroid camera out. Yeah. And the first picture I took in there ended up being a double shootout. And it was all screwed up except for the one corner of it. And Dominic's got to enhance it. But we actually caught something really, really interesting where you can see a shadow figure standing or sitting in in the corner, which was just a phenomenal piece of evidence. So uh, yeah. dude. You it just cool. I had to write this down because you reminded me I, last year I bought a Polaroid and I have no idea where it is. It's somewhere, it's either somewhere in my my giant mess in the um in the workshop over here or it's sitting in somebody else's toolbox right now i don't oh, know what the hell i did with it you know the polaroid can't we bought it i think we bought it last year when we were at old hospital was i think the first mm. time we bought we got it and just figured we'd give it a shot and see how it worked yeah that's one of my favorite things for taking pictures because it's it's bam it's right there and then you, you get it and you can look at it and just an amazing, just an amazing piece of equipment for how simple it really is compared yeah. to the technology and stuff that we use today. Well, look, it's, it's again, I'll, I'll kind of liken it to analog. You know, you got a lens, you got um, an exposure on a light sensitive film. There's no filtering and all that shit yeah. that's happening. Um, and, or there may be a little bit, but it just seems more like a direct kind of thing so i enjoyed using it i just wish the film was a little bit cheaper because oh yeah it, I know. it's easy to rip through a, a pack <laughs> and then well, getting it reset is a big a little bit of a pain in the ass yeah, but, there's only there's only eight exposures in yeah, a pack so yeah. you go through them awful quick yeah you do um so the george taylor house it's in that's in i have not been that's in pencil pennsylvania it's correct in pencil, it's in catasauqua yeah, cut us off. It's almost in your backyard, man. I know. It's right up the road. Um, I need to check it out someday. Maybe we'll yeah. all just do a, a fun private investigation one so, night. Yeah, talking with them right now, that seems to be all they're kind of focusing on is doing some private stuff. Okay, good. Um, not too much with public things right now. I guess there was some other issues they were trying to have or was for what she was saying i didn't get into it but um she was just saying they're just focusing on doing some private ones right now and they're doing some uh they're talking to some other group um about possibly doing a public one there you go but anything they do public they have their own team 
Okay. And they they do it kind of themselves right now. Yeah. Good. 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 Yeah, so, I want to yeah. check it out. Maybe we'll all go oh, one yeah. night. Oh yeah, that would be great. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I got to go back. So, and again, that was one of my first investigations. Yeah. Um. To go to when when Dominic and I were you know wavering. So again, and that's it was just a, a great place to Did go. I miss, to. I'm sorry. Did I miss D who? Oh my God, who? I'm sorry, hon. Thank you for joining today. I'm sorry that I did not say hello to you. I'm sorry. Good God. I'm going to be in trouble today. He's slipping. He's um, slipping, guys. Yeah, good God. Wade, Mr. Wade Kirby with a, a really... What's up, Wade? Really nice um, comment. Thank you, Wade. Thank you, Andy. Um, yeah. So... So who was there? Was it just you and Dom or did you have, did you bring anybody else along? It was, it was me and Dom. And then he brought two of his good friends. Okay. Um, and they're both sensitive, um, okay. which this was like maybe their second or first investigation they've ever been on with something like this. Okay. And it was pretty interesting to see and, and watch them have their experience. So, I mean, Dude, I totally understand where you're coming from when you say, you know, you love watching people and their expressions and stuff because it was just something else. Oh, yeah. Like for, for me, that whole night we were up in Rhode Island, you know, watching you all experience what you experienced there. Um, it does a lot. It does a lot for me personally, you know, but, yeah. you know, it was just, it was just awesome and so you get it right when somebody oh, comes in absolutely. they're just like what the yeah. hell yeah. it's kind of part of that is almost as fun as the paranormal experience itself oh, yeah. um hey mike cronin what's up buddy what's um up? so yeah man so i'm glad that worked out so there were four of you that night and yep. what what time how long did you did you stay so we had the place from 7 to 1 30. okay and we were there the entire time so that's enough Oh, that was more than enough. Yeah. Um, you know, when, when you're at an event and you're going through the rotations and stuff, the night seems to fly by. Um, when you're there by yourself, though, it's definitely the couple hours we were there was more than enough because I, I was spent at the end of the evening. Oh, yeah, dude. Tell me about oh, it. My I God. mean, you know, we had, well, Saturday night, we had a, a, a quiet, smaller investigation at McClay Mansion out in Harrisburg and yeah by 11 o'clock I was like oh god I'm ready to, I'm ready to sleep but we had some good I I gotta get this EVP um that we got we got one of the best EV uh peanut butter EVPs to date there really? at the play. oh yeah yeah and there was there was a a guy who had never investigated before it was his birthday um his girlfriend surprised him with this so he didn't even know nice. so they were like mcclay if you haven't been there it can be hard to find um hey kim um so they were kind of walking around outside and terry was out there like hey are you here for the ghost hunt and yeah we kind of blew the surprise there but um, <laughs> they were really really cool people um she's a photographer it was his first night and um at least from what I could tell, he was kind of blown away. Um, yeah, and Tom sent me an EVP that they got up on the third in the attic on the third floor, I think, that I still have yet to listen to. Tom, it's been it's been hectic. Yeah, um, well, Tom posted the knocking one. Oh, that's like crazy. Where he did the um, yeah, okay, I think that's the one he sent me. All right, okay. Tom. Shit. It, yeah, that was. Oh, sorry, dude. Spoiled it. No, it's for okay. You. It's. A, I think he says it. He sent it over, and I've just been tied up with more fun stuff. Um, yeah. But yeah, uh, there was a. You know, for me, that was it. He's saying, yeah. So for me, you know, that night, yeah. Look, we've had a lot going on too, so I was exhausted. But oh, yeah, you know, I got my ass out there. Um, we got to hang out. I got to finally meet Tom and Doreen and um there was a bunch there there were four guests there that um that were um you know prior prior uh cut they've been to prior events with us so it was really cool to kind of reconnect with yeah. with those people um yeah. yeah that one's just a kind of hang out and investigate yeah. place you know and um we had, we had a lot of fun as well i, yeah, I did it, and with my yeah it looked like there was a good group of people there oh there were there was, there was, was like, and, you know, a lot of fun, which is awesome to see. 
we got into a little bit of discussion about you know how the the community seems to be on fire um you know it, it's kind of it's good to talk to other people and get different perspectives on on it sometimes if you look at it you know from you know when you're in the weeds like this you know it can feel like everything around you is on fire but the bigger picture is you know i think you know there's pockets of it it's like those you know those wildfires through canada and and the us oh, at yeah. one point um but you know that all kind of gets washed away <laughs> when you're when you're hanging out with people and you're spending time doing why we're all here in the first place yeah. rather than you know sitting around um focusing on nonsense but um yeah it was good it was really good hey chris mac What's it up, was chris? really good to um get back out there and spend some time with people that that we knew and then a couple new people and we made it so much uh it was so much fun um do 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 every easy event each shows on the network bring good to light that's right yeah um hoot is anyone investing on four eight investing money i don't know yeah i don't know what that means i know sarah sarah, sarah probably does <laughs> we know your your typos girl um hey irene how are you irene uh we need to have a a chat with here soon sarah sarah stop trying this is supposed to i'll translate Oh, investigationing. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't oh, know I if we have an event. An eclipse that night, I guess, is what they're yeah, saying. Yeah, the big one. The the end of times eclipse is coming. Um oh. yeah, I got it, Sarah. Um <laughs> I don't know so, if we have an event. Julie, do we have an event? I can pull out the website. That's a Monday out. night. Oh, then no. The, the sixth is the Saturday. I might so be an EVP on the on on Tuesday. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. Unless maybe we can go to the roadhouse. Oh, <laughs> you can end up an EVP there on any day. Um, yeah. Yes, Irene. Um, she sent a she sent a message in this morning, but I've been busy. But we're gonna get a, as soon as Sarah is a little bit better, we're gonna set up that call with you guys. Um. Yeah. I'm quiet, Sarah she's over there laughing. good i'm glad you're laughing that you're sick now that you're sick um you know what let me bring that bring on this up real quick because while we still have yeah we got a lot of viewers today i don't know if that's scary really? or not. uh awesome. they came to see you, my face. it's all <laughs> you my friend i'm gonna i'm gonna pull up um our little announcement from earlier this week and share it with everybody um because i'm not sure it's um super clear what we've been up to or what we're working on um yeah so extreme ticketing.com became a, a branch of of get haunted right um you know a lot of there's a lot of teams there's a lot of groups that want to be able to host their tickets somewhere and and you quickly realize it's super hard to do it's not super hard to do it can get complicated and there's crazy fees so what we're doing is you know, we got this ticketing um, self-service portal built up. You know, if you're if you're a team like Knock, like your team, and you want to host your own um, events, you can sign up right here. You sign up, you can list your tickets out, you can create variations. There's all these different capabilities um, that allow you to get in and host your own events. Right now, we have um, we have several events up there live right we've got um rock, a rock island roadhouse another roadhouse right mm -hmm. two brothers extreme you can have your own tickets up there um and you set up your own payment processor the whole nine yards right so it takes a lot of the pain yeah. out of having does, in one of the big setting up on there rob does that take you through all the steps to set up your own payment. Oh, process. so we've got this. So we have Candy Slater. She is the, um, she is the project manager. She's the person helping big. She's the administrator. So she's going to walk people through, especially in the beginning. Right. And there's a very small fee that ticket takes out and extreme mm -hmm. ticketing. Look at Sarah calling us handsome. Um, <laughs> and yeah, Irene, the next time I'm in, 
uh, Japan. I would love to do that with you. Um, wow. Yeah, uh, yeah, you too, Lisa. Uh, everybody can can access this, so it's not like exclusive to anybody. Um, on top of that, phase two, right, is going to be um, the store capability. I kind of surprised everybody with this. Um, yes, we did. <laughs> yeah, we launched it. Everybody was like, hey, what the, what the, what the? And I was like, yeah, no, I wanted to pre-build your shops, right, uh, in case you decided to use it. And if you don't want to, you don't have to. So, like, Big Daddy Andy's got Sensing Shadows. P3S yeah. has their own shop right now. Denise and Ernie at Pac-Man Paranormal have their own shop. There's nothing in them. They didn't even know this shit existed. But I was trying to be proactive. Next of kin, you know, you can have your the equipment Dom builds up there. You can have hoodies and sweatshirts um, and all the fun stuff um in between yes candy slater is the extreme ticketing manager um thank you for that correction so um you know that's down the road just just a hair we've got you know forgotten explorations he's coast um empty casket paranormal and at least for now from get haunted what we'll do is have the services in there right the laser engraving the merch right and this all ties together, kids, right? So if yeah. Forgotten Explorations out of Virginia wants their shirts in here and their hoodies or whatever, we can manage We can manage all of it. Since we're making their damn shirts, we might as well be able to fulfill it. So truly becoming um, the one-stop shop. I'm getting there, Trevor. I'm getting there. And Jenny, <laughs> I'm getting there. Here's what, you know, the, here's what happened, right? We... We, we needed to get promoting on the, the Rock Island Paracom VIP tickets. Um, so we did launch a little bit earlier than we had um, anticipated, um, which is why you don't see everybody's stuff in there. And then came other things. So been tied up for a couple of days here. Um, hey, bad to the bone. How are you, Angelina? So that's kind of where we're at with, with this. So... Um, yeah, phase one. Again, you can put your own events up here. You can create your own tickets. You can create your own thing. I don't you can put you can put a a six year old's birthday party at Chuck E. Cheese up there. I don't care because you handle your own payment processors. You get your <coughs> excuse me, you'll get your own <coughs> You okay? I am good now. You get your own tax, <laughs> you get tax forms and all that fun shit, right? Um so there you go banter with the b you are here what oh no see tickets coming in hold on messages coming in not tickets yeah what's up richie b um yeah you didn't miss much uh we just saying hi to everybody and we went through next to can in their investigation by angelina yeah. <clears throat> so there you go um truly becoming the one-stop shop here yeah, when I saw this pop up, I was like, oh, wow, how great is this? One place to see all the different events everybody's having and, and kind of pick and choose where you want to go. Just, yeah. just a great concept that you guys brought to life. I mean, it, it's just really, really an awesome thing. Well, thanks. Yeah, <clears throat> look, it's hard. it was hard to, you know, we have tickets sold to a lot of events. So moving these over um, – is going to could create a whole nightmare so you're not seeing our events on there yet because we have tickets sold over here we have tickets sold over here yeah. and then i'm like trying to juggle too it's um it's not going to be easy richie b your shop can be there my man um so there you go um and it truly is it's about the community it's about getting everybody sarah's always said it everybody should have their own merch right yeah Everybody should be able to get a next to kin shirt because you have one of the coolest logos out there. Thank you. Um, everybody should be able to get Richie B has amazing, amazing uh, merch. Um, and he, he does have his own little shop, but there's all kinds of cool little things there's, that we can do. So many teams that are just, you just have on there right now that, you know, they have such cool designs and, and stuff like that and love to, to be able to, you know, make it easy to find that stuff. Yeah right yeah, and then great. it takes the giant question mark out of it and it takes a lot of the work away we're, we're here to help you set it up candy rob sarah uh, everybody that's involved with it right now um so yeah and we want to see other people grow but despite what you hear from certain people that is been our mission from day one so 
that was that's why extreme ticketing was launched um we have a few people already interested in putting events up so we're gonna see we'll see how it grows right, right. and we'll see what yeah. happens with it um so that was kind of the big news aside from the you know the recent news of the soiree in october um yeah we've got a we've got a lot of a lot of a lot of cool things happening um over the next few months and joe b i know you're going to be at or a part of some of them um so, so what are you thinking okay, where are you sure. come what's that you're coming to indiana aren't you oh yes well yeah we're going to old hospital oh yeah old hospital we'll, we'll be at old hospital we'll be at indiana um we're gonna be at missouri um oh yeah missouri so, state yeah. penitentiary yeah, um we're going to yeah we're gonna see a lot of joe this year and we've also got this bad boy coming i don't know if you're coming to this but if anybody watched um sarah show monday night with um ronnie leblanc you know from expedition bigfoot uh he's an author he's got uh from Monsterland. he's got all this stuff he's one of the nicest people in the paranormal that we've had the the pleasure of speaking and working with um this event is going to be off the charts crazy cool right because we're we're combining the three three of the disciplines right uh the ufo alien thing the scary ass bigfoot thing there it's all scary to me and then the ghost go the traditional ghost thing and we're we're kind of tying it we're seeing where they all tie together but you're going to get a taste of those three things over those two days along with workshops and whatnot um the prices right now are the early bird so if anybody is thinking about it that shit's going up soon um and you may want to consider grabbing your tickets this week um That's big daddy cool. andy's coming to indiana so it's going to be a big old big old party in indiana state sanatorium which i have never done um so i'm excited to get my ass there yeah so Holy the cow. other thing with the Indiana State Sanitarium, it's going to be Dominic's birthday. So yeah, it is. It's going to be the big twenty-one. Oh shit! <laughs> oh, look, we're going to have to go to dinner, but we also need him to be able to actually investigate. Well, that he's uh, believe it or not, he has an allergic reaction to alcohol. God, so. <laughs> what more could you ask for from for yeah. for a kid? Good God, I wish mine did. She's yeah, only yeah. nineteen. Yeah, him and my wife, they both really bad rashes and all kinds of stuff. My wife's ears turn like bright red from the alcohol. So it's 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 definitely different. Oh, let's talk about this man for a minute. Ron Yacovetti and the beautiful Lourdes will also be there um, utilizing Staticom to also and Ron, Ron actually sent some videos over to us yesterday where um, it, it, you got to hear this shit. Ron, the first part, I hear something a little different than what I saw in the video. I'll talk to you about that later. Um, but he asked about Bigfoot. And this and and if you don't know what Staticom is, it's essentially a closed loop, all white noise, and these voices come out of the white noise. And it says Bigfoot. It freaking says oh, wow. Bigfoot. Um, it's really cool. It's a female voice, right? So I don't know. It's just wild. So I've never been able to witness Staticom in person. I cannot wait to to work with Ron and Lord. It's on this. Um, Ron's going to be doing some some lecturing on it as well. It's just going to be a, a jam packed, um, informative, family style weekend, and it will continue on after that, right? Um, yeah, it's going to be cool. So now, is, want, it, is it Saturday and Sunday? It's yeah, I believe so. Okay. So yeah, it is because it's it is it's a weekend, uh, holiday weekend, which is why we picked also the Sunday. Oh, okay. um, makes sense. Yeah. So Boulder said he's going to drink for uh, he's going to drink for Dominic, um, <laughs> Irene. I don't know if I've had tradition any of the traditional Japanese moonshine. I have had some some interesting drinks on my many <laughs> visits to Japan. Oh, and food and food, um, including raw horse. I should say, which was raw horse. 
raw horse. It was better than it looked. Wow. Um, yeah, interpretation happens. That's the truth, sir. Um, yeah, it, yeah, it's not like okay. So the moonshine is not like socking. Okay, um, but I have had some some funky drinks. Yeah, I'll post a picture of my raw horse meal, um, which over there is is you know I was I was hanging out with the executives and they're like you're gonna eat this and they brought it out and yeah. Well, it, uh, when I was when I was in Iceland, we had horse as well. It was on the breakfast. Uh, menu buffet there and i tried i tried it it was actually really good right this was really good was it cooked yeah. or was it raw i think it was cooked i don't know if it was raw okay i don't know if i would have ate it if it was raw but then again i have eaten other raw stuff ah, so. basashi okay um yeah no there was no tail grown on me uh angelina <laughs> um basashi listen irene after so many trips really i only remember the bad words that everybody yeah. taught me so, so I, wonder not, what, I wonder what, what that's made with or what what's fermented in that for that kind of moonshine. So yeah, I don't know. Interesting. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I mean, I could, I could get to a train. I can say thank you. I can say good morning. Um, and then I could just say a whole variety of bad words. <laughs> <laughs> and they love, that's what they wanted to teach me. But yeah. you know, it, for those on the side, if you've never ever been to japan you need to go at some point in your life if you die without having visited japan you you've missed out on one of the most beautiful places in the world really? oh my god it's just it's amazing um i think i've been six seven eight times however many times and oh, wow. every time it's been you know you just see something new and, and seeing mount fuji and um taking the the you know mass transit there is insanity so irene look look at you cherry blossom fruit and 35 percent proof alcohol hmm. hmm hmm very interesting i'd like yeah. to try that <laughs> i don't know it scares me a little like i don't know i'm not a big big drinker i don't drink a lot but mm. I guess when I do, you know, I, I, I got big, big daddy's, uh, empty moonshine over here. Yeah. Um, Irene isn't suicide forest at the base of Mount Fuji. I don't, I don't remember if that's true or not. Um, yeah. Yeah. So listen, Tokyo were, drift, man. Being in Japan, what was your favorite thing that you saw? It's going to sound goofy. Cool? Yeah. Um, it's going to sound goofy, but here, here, here's what my favorite thing aside from it is aesthetically beautiful. It's, it's just different. Um, but you can walk down the street in Tokyo, which is a lot like New York city in terms of number of people, the types of buildings, um, and so on. Yes, there are endless vending machines, um, <laughs> Adam, and you can buy some funky shit in those vending machines. You won't find oh, excuse me. garbage on the side of the road or on the sidewalk or any. Everybody walks on the right side of the sidewalk. Like there's no, you're not, you're not like. Yeah, I've heard you know, that like in New York. It's just these thousand bicycles and they're all unlocked, right? Um, well, I was. I, I. There are certain restaurants I cannot go into because of of my tattoos. This is a true story. Um, actually had photos. They made me put on like these giant wristbands. Um, but that's, I get it. I understand that. But my favorite thing about Japan is, is truly how courteous, how kind, um, it's just a different way of, you get off the plane. First of all, I, I used to fly into Narita and she's like, you're welcome. It's like royalty, right? You, you, you yeah. were just you just treated like a, a beautiful human being. Um, and I used to feel bad. Actually, I would have the engineers fly over to the U S sometimes and they would fly into Newark. Right. And I'd oh be like, yeah. and then they're like, Oh, let's fucking go get out. Like they're, they're freaking, they have PTSD by the time they get out <laughs> of Newark. Um, yeah. 
you know, it's just a completely different culture. And, uh, but my, my favorite experience there, and I don't remember the name it was a little town I was in, but, but my boss at the time took me to a Buddhist fire ceremony. Oh, interesting. So it's the monks and the chanting for a, a half hour, 45 minutes, whatever, however long, um, is the most spiritual thing I've ever attended, ever witnessed. Um, it was just amazing. And if that's if you don't get to, if you don't get to ever do that, um, what disappears? I'm sorry. Oh, are we already shut down? Um, yeah, Haneda Airport. Okay, yeah, Haneda's a that's a good option there. But the Buddhist fire ceremony was was one of my favorite things because it was incredibly yeah. spiritual. Um, yeah, I don't know. So I don't know. Facebook's acting weird, I guess. Yeah, I can't see any of the, the comments like on my phone here that I'm looking at. Um, mm -hmm. I wonder there's what nothing on there. Totally blank. Oh, uh, yeah, look at that. Well, what's happening here, what's happening is I, I don't know. Uh, there's also chats are getting weird because they're they're turning all the chats into encrypted and then encryption. Yeah. Um. So anyway, yeah. Sorry for those on the side. I don't know. This is a um, this is a weird thing. So yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah the only thing I'm seeing is actually what you put up on the screen. Okay. Well, and not that the other ones aren't important. There's just there are a lot of comments, but people are saying now they're seeing it. So who knows what's happening? Facebook is doing some upgrades. I'm yeah. not going to go the conspiracy theory route just yet. No. But to finish that whole thought, yes. Um, if you haven't been, hey Matt, uh, Matt Kondraki, how are you? Um, if you haven't been to Japan, well worth going. Um, the whole paranormal subject there is is viewed a little bit differently than it is here in the u.s um so it can lead to some very very interesting um discussions but yes irene i would love to visit i don't know if i would love it it would be kind of weird but to visit suicide forest um i don't know and i don't know about the waterfall but and i have no info on that but i have seen um some videos on the suicide forest and ugh. I don't know. It creeps me out a little bit. Whew, so what do you have for this weekend, my friend? What are you doing? I'm not doing really anything. Um, my wife is actually on a girl's cruise. And she's not coming home until really late Saturday night. Ooh. So I guess I'm in charge of getting stuff ready together for Easter on Sunday. So. Oh, shit. That's this Sunday. Yes, it is, man. <laughs> It doesn't seem right. It just feels like it's way too early. I was really confused by this in a meeting. It is. Time. It is um, way too early. And this is why I'm not allowed to handle booking locations because we'd be we would have had a location ready to go on Sunday, Saturday into Sunday, oh, because I would have booked it. Yes, yeah. so I would have been there. <laughs> and you would have been there. It would have been me and you and the Easter Bunny. Um, yeah, guys. So, so what else? How how many? Do you, you guys have your events for the rest of the year planned out or no? We're kind of, we're up until I think July with what we're doing so far. And then um, we have, uh, oh, shit. we're going to the bash and stuff like that. And then in October, we're going to the soiree. And then uh, November, we're going on another deer hunting trip. And then right after the deer hunting trip, we're, uh, we're doing our little special investigation with two brothers. We're going back out to, uh, oh. yeah. Well, yeah, I, th we might be having a, another person pop in. I don't know when he sent this message. Yeah. About damn it. About 20 minutes ago. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the delay. I didn't see it. Should have said something on, uh, yeah. on the actual live. That would have been helpful, but we'll see. He might pop his ass and we're going to see what happens. Cool. Um, Jenny Davis, get haunted. Will be will be represented at the bash. That's yeah. The answer is yes. Um, yep. Whoa, Joe, how are you, buddy? How are you? Um, hold on, I got pop up here blocking everything. There you go. Um, there's still a couple of spots for um, yeah, uh, Rock Island Paracon. Um, 
Yeah, that's that's a good point. October fifth, yeah. people. Um, the, I haven't heard anything, Wade. Um, I would assume that by October they should be able to get that. I know the ship's already gone to dry dock. I uh, watched some cool yeah. footage of it. Uh, that was pretty cool to see. Yeah. So at least that wasn't the, the cause of it all. So yeah. we might have a little another surprise guest here in just a moment. Cool, cool, man. I think by the time that the battleship's out of dry dock, I'm pretty sure they'll be able to get it back through. You know, I would assume so. I would assume so. But I mean, what a horrible tragedy that was! Oh my. Um, God. Look, I woke up to it and I started seeing the footage, and I it looked like a. To me, I thought it would. I thought they demoed that thing. So did I. I. And then I started reading, right? And I was like, "Oh my yep. god, I've been over that bridge." Um, yeah. I did. I I read I um. I read a, a a one one post by somebody that just crossed it three minutes earlier. Yeah. Um, it's terrifying, man. Like, yeah. yeah you know, was- to me, it seems absurd that you know that ship that's all it took that's all it took yeah i mean that, um, yeah, that was just so strange yeah it's not cool it's not cool it makes me want to stay home more um yeah. and that's like one of my biggest fears is being on a bridge like that any bridge really and something like that happening so that my worst fear i seen happen i wasn't there but i seen it uh yeah, so adam's just- saying um the bridge was poorly built, no guards on the comms, like other okay. Uh, that's that's yeah, interesting to know. Yeah. But the, the oh. bridge is, you know, was built so far back. I believe in the seven early 70s it started and then mid 70s it was completed. So you know, back then they didn't have all the safety precautions in that they have now when they, they engineer these things. So yeah. You think they would have operated around them to put the big bumpers in or something. Well, it's crazy. I also read uh, that chip. Uh, the crew has had they had incidents in the past um, outside of the country where they hit another ship. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, and Courtney Courtney makes a great point. I mean, the damage uh, the damage could have been much much more serious if oh, yeah. you know if it was during rush hour. Um, yeah. yeah. See, Christina, that that that's frightening too. Um, yeah. You know, talking about you know decaying infrastructure uh, on the highways and bridges in this in this country is it's kind of scary to me. Um, so yeah, that is um, yeah. So uh, I don't know. I just I know I've driven over that bridge and I remember paying the toll even. Uh, yeah. Hold on, what's Stacy's gonna add some wisdom here? Every bridge was surveyed on a single, every single one got an F grade. That's fr- that is frightening. Yeah, listen, let's not talk about that. I don't even want to know about that. Yeah, That's right. not... Oh, god, yeah, I don't want that to happen. So, yeah, I mean, that's where we're at, guys. There's a lot happening. Uh, I'm gonna give. We're gonna give this prep. I'm sorry. I wish they would have said put me in. They should have messaged me sooner. I feel bad. Coming. I know he saw it. <laughs> oh, that's too bad. That's too bad. I messed up. I messed oh, up. I turned my volume down and I didn't have Facebook open. Yeah. Oh well. But if he was watching, he should have said something. Um, yeah. So again, so you know, we're coming up on the end of the first quarter here, and um, you know, the first first few events were were completely blown out and sold out. Uh, things have slowed down a little bit for us, and it's um, it's scary. It's a sign of the economy, a sign of the times, I yeah. think. But. Um, we will plow through this shit. Um, Has, have you seen that kind of happen like in previous years, Rob, where like the beginning is really great and then it slows down? It's like with me with remodeling. I see that all the time. We have that certain time period where it's like bang, 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 and then it slows right down. So yeah. I just wonder if it's like something. That yeah, look, I mean, we're only on our third year, right? And the first year we kind of started late. Um, 
we're coming up on well this is we're, we're at two and a two and a quarter right now basically right so we only really have one full year behind us to to okay. even benchmark it to um so have we grown absolutely like more than i ever expected um it's just fun it, even you see the numbers and the trends it's like you can kind of tell when shit's going down with the economy yeah. or there's concern about the economy and i'm sure with your business um as well yeah he's they're gonna pop on here in a moment um i do i am sporting some new some new paranormal art if you haven't noticed that that wall was a little blank we'll we'll share that i gotta put my glasses on see that man tax time shit sarah's right about that i forgot about that yeah it's a cool oh, that's of, cool yeah paranormal art by mr uh mr michael castro um tax time yeah well that's the scary part sarah i need people to buy tickets so i can pay my taxes just kidding i already you know but <laughs> Yeah, tax times is a scary time for for people, and then those tax checks come in, and and, and people and start buying tickets happen. again. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so, uh oh, okay, uh, I gotta confirm an address. Okay, uh -oh. with somebody on the side here. Uh, yeah, man. Um, so what else? you got going on that's it you just is how's dom doing with equipment man it, you know it's a struggle i mean he's he's 20 years old and to try and get him to focus on stuff it's been hard and then he screwed up his hand working on his truck i saw he was out i mean we finally he finally got um your rod repaired so it's just trying to get him to do stuff and focus um I'm hoping he gets a girlfriend soon, so he's not running around as much. <laughs> hey, Tom, I hope you're not watching. No, he's, so he I'm, doesn't have a girlfriend yet. I'm sorry. He'll get uh, one. He'll oh, I know. Him. But, you know, just to get him to focus and stuff, um, trying to get him to, to make a few rods for the bash and stuff like that, and just in general to have on hand. Um, so, I mean, that's it. We're, he's redesigning the rods again. Um, we've gotten some great feedback. And, uh, you know, like having the battery compartment on the outside of it. So yep. we're looking into that to make it easier to change the batteries. Yeah. yeah um, once his hand's better, he's got mine for repair. I, I snapped. Well, I have it. It's, it's done here, actually. Oh, good. Yeah. I snapped mine. Thing. Look, I, yeah. I, I think I, it got a beating from me. Um, and it, yeah. land, it, land, it lasted quite a while. Um, yeah. But, uh -oh. um, like, he's redesigned... You know, like he's redone the wiring in it a little bit differently and and stuff like that. So, I mean, yeah. he's come a long way with it and he is working on it and he's trying to come up with some other stuff. So then he wow. sees all of these ideas that other people are putting out there and he's like, oh, we could do that. We could do that. And I was like, instead of doing it, show me you can do it, you know? Yeah. Yep. All right. Yeah. Well, he's, he's on his path. He's on his journey. Yeah. Um, oh, he definitely is. So. But you know, Sarah's right. ISS, come celebrate Dom's birthday with us at Indiana State Sanatorium. Um, you know, right now there, there's there's some tickets sold, but we need some more. We need to make that place is enormous, and I want to be able to. Yeah. I really want to have um, a big group there so everybody can experience it. Um, we're gonna have some cool experiments uh, planned for that night. Sarah should be there, so there you go, oh, cool. all you Sarah fans. All you, Sarah. Oh, um, see, see, I'm supporting Sarah you. right there, oh, yeah, man. You yeah, you are. I got another one. I got to ship out downstairs. Um, yeah, it's um, it's a lot of work getting these things going, but get your asses out there. I mean, we don't yeah. go into the mid Midwest all. I think that's. I don't even know. Is that considered Midwest? I think. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, we don't go that way often. So when we do, show your asses up. I know there's good barbecue too. So. <clears throat> oh yeah oh my god uh oh uh oh hey what's up man <laughs> guys, guys chat what's happening yeah this this means one of two things where they're in trouble or, <laughs> or he's gonna say something funny um uh, this is mid yes don't get your hopes up mid mid <laughs> mid what 
Um, What's up, Michael? Not much. How's this microphone? I had to buy another microphone. Yeah, it sounds good. Your other one yeah. was hurting. All right. Your other microphone was. All right, we're done talking about microphone, okay? <laughs> All right. What do, we, what do you want to talk about, sir? Oh, no, man. I just came on to hang out. Oh, so I actually today I went and I shopped at the commissary for the first time in 19 years. Look at you. I'm making big moves, buddy. Tax free. And <laughs> and and they gave out plastic bags. What? Oh. <clears throat> they were like, what kind of bag do you want? And I was like, what do you mean? And they're like, paper or plastic. I was like, plastic? <laughs> what do you mean? Give me a plastic bag. So okay, it probably okay. doesn't make sense to a lot of people in New Jersey. They outlawed plastic bags. Yeah. So you, oh, yeah. You, so you have to go, you have to buy these fucking bags now to use. And it's, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Totally. So I got like, New York is the same way. They outlawed bags and stuff like that. They try to competition. Joe. Something they got to charge you for it. Yeah. Yeah. Look, sir, I was digging the, the, the dude ship happening. Um, yeah, here in here in Pennsylvania, we still get plastic bags, right? Yeah, um, right? And I do. I bring them out to these states where they're they've been outlawed, and I and I sell them because I'm greedy. Yeah, because <laughs> right. sell plastic well, bags. Twenty two. You gotta be cents. careful. You gotta be careful in New Jersey with your plastic bags. You know, man, people look at you funny. Do they? Yeah. Did you get those? Yeah. Well, yeah. listen. Let me see your license. Let me see your ID. <laughs> yeah. If I get thrown up against a, a cop car for a plastic bag, then right. It, well, it, so, so what do the little Italian old ladies do when they have when the rain's coming and they can't put the plastic bag on their heads anymore? Oh shit! <laughs> I've seen that. I yeah. have seen that. So danger. You, you, know, you, go ahead. you know what else I like about shopping at the commissary? I'm just gonna rub it in all you civilians' faces out there. Is they got these like nice little Asian women that bag all your shit and take it out to your car and then they put it in your trunk. I'm just like, wow, the service, the service. Oh god! You know? But then they look at you like because that's you know they work for tips, you know. So like you're kind of forced to give them like a ten or a twenty, you know. Damn. For, for well, now there work. goes your free plastic bags. Um, yeah. In case you didn't know, Terry Thomas from Haunted Trails in Gettysburg um, chimes a hearse. Hey, Terry, Try Terry, Terry, I got to tell you something. I have a confession, bro. Rob stole the key to that house. Yeah, listen. We, no, I didn't. I have yeah. screenshots. I can prove it's, it. <laughs> <laughs> it's at Rob's defense for everything. I got screenshots. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, uh, Terry, I have the key. Um, I'm coming Thursday to fix the uh, the perf job um and to, and to do the back windows i'll bring the key with me so hopefully your friend didn't get yell at you about that oh it's all I'm Rob's sure fault. yeah Rob getting people in trouble i did it's it all rob's fault yeah danger rob, rob, rob brought the rob brought the brown guy and the brown guy took the key right <laughs> that's what happened all right hey mike i got enough shit going on let's not start new right. rumors man uh hold on we have an actual legitimate question a military question okay. um Cousin is leaving the military as an officer, and his reason is because he doesn't like the way the army is heading. What do you see now, Adam? You've been trying to get me in trouble, bro. Yeah. See, like, I come from, I come from what people call the old school army. I still had, I had the OG uh, woodland <laughs> fucking camo, yeah. right before the digi days. You know, I'm, I'm first wave Iraq War. You know, I'm, I, I, yeah, the, I think, I think America in general, here I go. I'm going to get in trouble. We're going to get canceled. This, <laughs> oh, this, this shit. podcast ain't going to see the light of day. Just so you know, they're watching. Then now the feds are watching, right? <laughs> um, I think that everyone's wrapped up in their feelings more than they are, you know, like actual shit. So I, yeah. And you know what? I'm not to say that feelings aren't actual shit, but I think when you prioritize feelings over, you know, what the military should be focusing on, right, is its lethality. And uh, at the end of the day, that's what the military is. It's supposed to be a lethal combat force. It's not supposed to be worrying about any of this other shit, right? Yep. I went through basic training. They were still beating the hell out of you. Oh, yeah. You know? 
Yeah. There. I I got listen, I, I got through what year did you go in? 90? Hey man, don't be talking about my service. All right. Well, I went in in 89. You went in, you went, you went in. I was in in the 70s. Yeah. They didn't have <laughs> chin straps. They didn't have chin straps when I was nah, I was 89, right? right? This shit was starting. Wait, wait, back. wait. You joined the military in 89? Yeah. God damn, boy. You old as hell. So I went in, but it was starting then because we were the um I remember. No, I was 11 Bravo, right? And I remember the drills came in and we were getting ready to graduate uh, AIT, and which is Advanced Infantry Training for all you civilians. Um, and they came in and they were like, listen, you know, we're not supposed to curse anymore when calling cadence. And they're like, yeah, yeah. fuck that, right? So as we're Mark, they, yeah. you know, and we had our big, you know, families flying down for graduation. So it's a big parade. Mm. And, um, they they pick you know my one of my favorites a yellow bird with a yellow bill almost perched upon my windowsill so that, i don't know that might be too old school for you mike's like what's he way talking too about? old way yeah too old. uh but they yeah. basically they lure the bird into the <laughs> into the room and then smash his fucking head and that yeah. was that's the cadence and that's what we did in front of everybody but all the way back in 89 that was starting um you know wow. it, it was you know not what? I that well I didn't go through any of that. Like, um, they weren't, I can tell you that they, they beat the hell out of me in, in basic training. Um, they beat the hell out of me in AIT. And, uh, and, and when I got to my first duty station, I was like, I, I was like, oh, they're going to, they're going to kick my ass. <laughs> you know, like everybody's going to kick my, I went in there. I was super squared away, you know? starched and shiny boots and all and and it was so laid back when i got finally got to my unit because you know things were just different and like yep. uh but but when it came time to perform like your performance was was the key right so and and basic training in ait it's you're still in a training environment so they're trying to just instill as much discipline and try to harden your ass up as much as possible so when you get to your unit, God forbid you have to deploy right away or you get put in a situation, you have to, you know, you have all that training has to kick in. You got to make sure that you're mentally tough, physically tough, um, because everything is going to be, you're going to experience everything, everything, all at once, all at yeah. once. And each person, each person depends on the other, right? right? And, and even yeah. if you hate, hate each other in real life, when you're in the field, once you're deployed, that's it your all changes, right? And and that's, yeah, yeah. Well, it, that you know that goes all all the way back to you know the Spartan days, sure, right? The phalanx, right? You have to, you 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 uh, have to depend. I was just actually talking to my wife about this. I have the weirdest conversations with my wife, but you know, <laughs> you you have to depend on the person next to you that can cover down on your inadequacies. And you have to be okay with your inadequacies, like, and you have to be honest about it, right? Like, I, you can't go out and be like, oh, "I'm the toughest fucking guy. I'm a sharpshooter. I'm an expert marksman. I can do all this. I can do all that." When you get out in the field, as soon as the first round whizzes past your fucking Kevlar, like, <laughs> you're fucking all that's out the window. There's a good jujitsu analogy, right? Black belt in jujitsu normally takes you ten years to get a black belt in jujitsu, right? If you're training under the right person. And that's going constantly and training constantly. And and during the transition from jujitsu to MMA, like a lot of those guys go and they fight mixed martial arts. They say a black belt in jujitsu, they get punched in the face one time, they're a brown belt. <laughs> they get punched in the face again, they're a purple belt. Like you just forget stuff, you know, and you yeah. have to rely on the next person that's not getting punched in the face to yeah. like your coach that's screaming at you from the side you know, to snap you back to it. Right. And, and that's the same thing on an infantry line or a fucking, you know, in a squad or, you know, a convoy, whatever, you have to make sure that you're, you're covered down on everybody. That's the truth. I, I no. scared Joe. What happened, Joe? No, I don't know what happened, Joe. You're, you're MIA right yeah. now. He's a wall. Um, we'll pull him down until he comes back. If he comes back, I don't know what happened. Joe B, Joe B. Yeah. Got, he might've got, no, you know what, you know what I want to talk about? Wait, Go ahead. Go ahead, bro. No, go ahead, man. No, you go ahead. No. What what did Lourdes say? What she said? Oh, that was Ron, not Lourdes. That was Ron. Oh, hey, hey, Ron. How you doing, Ron? Yeah, I can bet it. 
Yeah, true danger. Right, he's seen that case. I, you know, he used to he used to commentate right for uh, what was it? Strike Force was that it? Ron, I don't know. But I don't know. Well, you mean talking about Ron? Ron? Yeah, Ron. Oh yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah, he used yeah, to. That's yeah. right. Uh, the, yeah, me and him sit back and we'll talk about you know talk about because I was a professional fighter. I know a lot of fighters. You know what I mean? And shit, I'm wearing my I'm wearing my Muay Thai. What is it on this side? Yeah, my Muay Thai. Yeah, my, my Muay Thai hoodie right Love now. It. But no. yeah, no, so like. What it, a word's gonna it's say. Oh, wait, well, there's a private chat. Joe might have had to go. Yeah, he, he said he'll be right back. Um, he had, for he had me, you know, basic basic training was was most critical thing ever, you know, because you do go in thinking you're Billy Badass and you're coming off the streets of Edison, New Jersey, and not, nobody can fuck with me, right? But yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, you learn really quickly that there's always a bigger Billy Badass out there. And and what what the beauty of basic training and AIT was it did. It broke you down to zero and then built everybody back up pretty equally, right? And there's always going to yeah. be a guy that can do more push-ups than you or run faster than you. But to your point earlier, right? So when you're out on a run, like a company run, platoon run, whatever, you know, the slow guy, right? The slow guy, the fast guy circle back and come up behind him Absolutely. and help you get up that fucking hill Absolutely. every single time. Yeah. Um you know, and, and the people I always remember the most in the military, including one of my COs, you know, I was RTO for my first year. That rucksack was easy, 85, 90 pounds, um, you know, on 12, 14 mile forced marches. Um, that man would grab my rucksack every chance he could and let me sleep every chance he could. Um, you know why? Because he started yeah, out. He had a crush on you. He that and he started out as an enlisted man, right? So he knew yeah, he no, came right, in right, college right. and he so he knew what it was like to be fucking suck and win. Yeah. But anyway, what it's important. I think that's something that's missing from a lot of people today is they never been to fucking boot camp. <laughs> they don't know what it's like. Um, well, you know, it's it's listen, right? I think I think we're we're all being very careful and you know making sure we're not offending people now and I, which is yeah. good there is a there's a good aspect to that right yeah. because i mean has anybody ever walked the streets in new york city you know like yeah. they don't give a fuck right like yeah. Uh, yeah, but, right. but in in and and to some people like growing up elite xc there you go there you go um yeah so there's there's a good there's a good aspect to, to, you know, biting your tongue or maybe in thinking before you speak, you know, on some things. But, but I think that if you're doing it and the only, the only beneficiary of that is the person that you're speaking to, right. Then there's no, there's no, there's no equal benefit there. Right. I have to, I have to change the way I speak to make you feel better Then then I probably just not going to talk to you, you right. know? And, mm -hmm. and because I just, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I was talking to my daughter <laughs> we have really fucking weird conversations too. And cause she's, she asked me why I'm not, why I don't want to meet her boyfriend. Right. <laughs> and why I don't want to like hang out with him, which is like, I don't know. I, I know that my sister, when she was growing up, he, you never saw my sister's boyfriend. Cause he was just getting fucking ripped every time he came around, you know? So he didn't want to hang out with us. And I'm like, it's so funny that my daughter wants to bring her boyfriend around. And I'm like, I'm like, no, I have no interest. I have no desire to sit there and, and talk to a, a 19 year old. There's nothing that we have in common. There's nothing about him that I would find interesting. Right. And, yeah. and if I'm the one that he finds interesting, then even I don't want to answer anybody's questions. I don't want to, I don't want to sit there and entertain anybody. I, I got probably 20, 30 more years left on this earth. I'm not going to spend it catering, you know, to, to, to yeah. I'm gonna do that's a great point. You yeah, know, do whatever I want. Now, um, Adam, Adam doesn't want to fight. You know, he knows you know how to fight. And that's kind of funny because Mike and I didn't start out as friends right i fucking wanted to kill mike in the beginning i'm like wow yeah. so i call I'm like why don't people do though like, most people do until they sit down and talk yeah to like and then he showed up and i'm like <laughs> dude i think this dude can fight maybe it shouldn't fight that idea. <laughs> uh, you know what i like that though i like that because if it does ever get to the point where like oh i'm gonna fight this guy i'm like all right <laughs> you know we'll show yeah, up and we'll see, how well, yeah. it goes. We'll yeah. see how well it goes and you know what man look i might get my ass beat you know who knows 
Rob's got them real skinny legs, man. I'm sure he's super aerodynamic. <laughs> yeah, you was, know? Do you know how much shit I man. took for that? Man, I bet oh, you just... Oh, man, you're still getting it, Rob. Yeah, horse legs. pictures and shit last <laughs> oh, night. Oh, my God. Yeah. I, you know what? I guess it's better than, like, if I would have shown up and you were wearing, like, MC Hammer parachute pants. I <laughs> 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 fucking... <laughs> hey, now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Back in the day, I wore some of those Listen, parachute I'm not... Pants. I'm, I can neither confirm nor deny that I owned a <laughs> pair of parachute pants also growing up. <laughs> right? <laughs> Listen, Listen, shit. What are you talking about, bro? And look, yeah. everything's everything's working full circle. Like bell bottoms are back, crop tops are back, right? Like yeah. when I see somebody wearing fucking parachute pants walking around, I'd be like, God damn. Yeah, right. You know? Yeah. <laughs> We're I don't back. think I had them, but I also had, I did have a pair of spandex, which we've all talked yeah. about. Yeah. We're doing yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, no, and I'll say this. Yeah, that was the first because you you're too muay thai that shit's crazy to me this dude's got yeah, he's yeah. got little fucking legs not little legs they're big legs so like i ain't fighting him can't fight him legs are strong <laughs> as shit yeah no hey, listen i haven't i haven't trained in a, in a while i have camo it's it's a little bit more acceptable for women <laughs> a little yeah, bit it is, uh, sorry <laughs> right yeah um you know, and leg warmers. I have leg warmers now too. Oh yeah, yeah I, I can see. I can see. I can see Rob. I can see Rob. You guys ever seen a Reno nine one one? That show. <laughs> Reno Rob, Rob's the guy with the fucking roller skates and hot pants. <laughs> There's a lot of shit being said lately. There's oh my god, like that's great. I can picture that now. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry. It's around. like it's like steered into your brain now, right? All right. <laughs> All right, there will be Photoshop. Nice, what, what is that on your wall behind you? Oh, oh, this 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 beautiful piece of art. Yeah, where did you get that? That's pretty oh, awesome, man. Some guy sent it. Do you want me to show it? Yeah, let's see it. Oh man, I gotta pull it down. I'm wearing sweatpants, so nobody look. Oh, he's wearing parachute pants right now. This guy. Yeah, he is. <laughs> well, at least he's wearing pants. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a start. Most of my shows, I don't. Um, all right, well, let's. Oh, I, I guess this is why Mike came on, <laughs> but it's um, it's just a, a fun design. Uh, that's awesome, Illuminati. Yeah, um, George, uh, yeah that's nice. Oh, yeah, that is really cool, Mike. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a that's bad. a it's you know what when you when you put in like the dimensions of 24 by 36, you never think that it's as big as it is, right? And then you see it, it's like, <laughs> huge, you know. Yeah, so you know, I saw the design and I was like, damn, I want that on a hoodie, right? And then Mike's like the next day he's like, Hey, um, I got a uh you got a package coming. So I was like, <laughs> I had to run out because I'm trying to trying to fix my own headlights and it's just not working. Um when I came back, there's I'm like, there's this enormous box in front of the door. I'm like, holy shit. Um, wow. that's what was in there. And then I, I spent a lot of time measuring that, trying to center it. And then I realized I sit right in front of the goddamn thing. So it is hard to see, but it the colors are amazing. Um, it's even signed by Mr. Michael Castro. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. I did sign. How did you come up with a design like that, Mike? I just think that's amazing that. You guys, like both you and Rod, you come up with some of these designs, and it's just oh, awesome. I didn't, I didn't come up with that design. I stole it off the internet. Oh, oh okay. Shh. Well, Dude, I'm trying to give you props here, and you just like adapted. Me. <laughs> you know? It's okay, Mike. I steal all my all my artwork too. It's I see. I good. stole it. I stole off the internet. It's no, it's actually made by that that actual background, not the words, but the background itself is made by a pretty pretty. Uh, legit graphic designer and um i purchased i purchased i purchased it from them and then i um right. yeah and then i added like text over overlaying the text and stuff onto okay. it right that's cool i'd been looking for something for back there and then that popped in and i'm like yeah it's going yeah. on you know honestly i i do i i have a giant print facility i have a massive print facility um so i do uh tents you know yep. like the custom yeah. trade show tents i do table covers i do pop-up banners um does part of part of that what's that 
You do it all. They did the I get do, uh, Mike did the get haunted tent. If you saw the get haunted tent, it's one of the most badass tents out there. Yeah, and then I also do part of us. We uh, part of the facility does the uh, stretch canvases, right? And so we do framed canvases, posters, uh, stretch canvas. We do all sorts of shit, and we also do like a lot of prints for museums on archival paper. Right. So, um, yeah, so we do like a lot of high end stuff. So, you know, when I get an idea and I push it through, like, it's just, <laughs> they're like, come on, man, because they do like, do they, we do stuff for like the Guggenheim, you know, like, <laughs> like big, big, like museums, you know, wow. and, and, wow. and, uh, and so when I, I come up with like these stupid fucking things to, to print. So honestly, though, like if anybody has, um, and I get things like super cheap. Right. I don't think anybody can beat my prices anywhere on anything. Right. Mm -hmm. um, any of these things, I guarantee you I can beat any fucking price out there. Uh, no, no doubt about it. Like, for instance, that stretched, custom made, uh, framed canvas uh, print. How much do you think that that would cost? Well, because I've, I've purchased some similar sizes mm -hmm. you know uh, from photographs yeah. i'd say probably about a 170 yeah, so say, uh, anywhere from 170 to 200 bucks yeah yeah 70 dollars. all right don't give away all the secrets oh. mike i'm giving it. i'm giving it away yeah y'all hit me up you guys want 24 by 36 inch custom prints anything you want on a 24 by 36 i'll put it on there for 70 bucks shipped to your door 70 all in Right I'm gonna send you a photo. But that life. offer, that offer is only good till the end of the day today. So think about it. Oh shit! <laughs> wow! It Dude, like blends in up, with. It blends in with the wall. the wall in the back. I was like, that sock's Ow. floating. Ow. I just got a cramp too. God damn it! <laughs> um, yeah, Listen, I'm gonna that send offer's you a photo. only good till the end of the day today. After that, I'm raising. I'm raising it back up to what I normally sell that shit for. Which is, you know, $120, but I'll do a $70 deal. DM me on Facebook or let Rob know. Rob knows how to get a hold of me. And yeah, you anything you want on a 24 by 36 inch stretched framed canvas, dark wood or light wood, you let me know. $70. So I'll be messaging you later. Yeah, me too. <laughs> there we go. Does it even apply to me? Do I, or is mine 75? Yeah, yours is a little bit more. All right, you got something else coming to you tomorrow. Do I? God damn it. I'm excited. Yeah. It's like Christmas. And it's not, it's not a present, though. It's marketing materials. For yeah, I know. I know Supernatural it. Soiree. Supernatural Soiree. Soiree.com. Yeah, that's coming up. Wait. It's going to be exciting. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, get there. Get your tickets now so that we can uh, do even bigger and better things, folks. This shit ain't cheap. Trust us. <laughs> You got a whole yeah. fucking chip. You got, you got a lot, we got a lot going on. So let's, yeah. like, the more, this, the more this people. This is going to be a phenomenal event. I mean, oh my God. Yeah. yeah. As we, as we get closer, you know, the, the video marketing push for it, we're going to be revealing more, uh, yeah. more stuff. Um, yeah. And that, I mean, like what we've already told you is just so much cool stuff. Right. Uh, but there's just, all the other things that's going to be available for you there is just fucking ridiculous, you know? So I'm, I'm super excited for it. I, I, I like the planning and development phase for it. Like the, the design and the planning, because when the event does come around, I love it when it comes to life, you know, oh, yeah. for us, we see a lot of like two or 3d renderings of what we, what we would want or what we would think, but I can guarantee you that there's no video I can put out. And there's no marketing, you know, ad we can put out that's going to make like when you guys see it in person is just yeah. ridiculous. It's going to be right. fucking ridiculous. He's right. Mm -hmm. And then I know you're working on the next issue of Ghosted. When, when, when are we? Yeah, so, at? so the April, yeah, the, the um, print production facility, man, they're like on point. So I do all the large format stuff my small format like uh business cards catalogs magazines all sorts of stuff they they sent me like the what it's gonna look like you know all done 
with with the new nice. binding and everything. Nice. Oh okay. wow. Yeah. It's yeah. I, it's it's better than I would have ever thought that it could look like, right? And, and you know, of the magazines that have been out, the last two issues, right, were really high quality. They're not low oh, quality. Yeah. Absolutely, they are. But I think, personally, from a design perspective, um, they were just too thick. And like, you know, like if I saw it on a table, I would definitely pick it up and read it. But you're flipping through it. I mean, it's just a really, really nice magazine. And for the price point, I don't think we were we were maximizing our profit potential based on the quality of it, right? Right. Um, and and then the like, you know, we sold, we we're selling, we we're selling tons of these. Our pre-sales are fucking blew the second issue out of the water on the pre-sales for this issue. Wow. Wait you a know? minute. And we haven't even been marketing it. Wait a minute. And I think it's because, you know, we didn't we there's a company we didn't have in this one. We have in there that up your sales. Yeah. That they really upped it, you know. Um, so we're not getting the boycott perspective. <laughs> <laughs> I, so, it, it, and it, it's, we're gonna we have like a hidden picture inside this magazine. It's it's Rob Rob's mugshot. You know, <laughs> most wanted man. Well, most wanted man. Yeah. Right? Listen. <laughs> I'm behind it all. I'm just kidding. That's not in the magazine. There's no mugshot of Rob in the magazine. That's oh, it. Man. We're looking for one. But did Carolina you just use the word profit? Did you just use the word profit? Hey, man, look, it's a business. I, and this is what I don't understand, right? And, and look, when I, on a part of the paranormal teams that I've been on, we've never charged people to go and investigate homes like if they've asked us to come and, and do an investigation, right? One thing is very clear. That I don't think is responsible, charging people or asking for donations to investigate their home, right? That's a their private what do you mean like, a, like a private home, like a private home, private yeah. investigation. I don't think it's cool that one you're gonna charge them for your time to go. I don't think that's that's right, and I would never yeah. do that, right? Um, locations, lo locations need upkeep. Right. And that's just the bottom line. That's why yeah. locations allow investigations and charge people. It's not because they're pocketing the money. It's because they need to put oil in the tank. They need to pay the electricity. They need to upgrade the Wi-Fi services and pay for their cable bills. And sometimes it's to pay for security. Sometimes it's to pay, you know, do something nice for the volunteers of yeah. the organization that helps maintain the property. Right. Just um, all these things are very, very important, you know, so when we're doing something like for instance i run a location it's called the new new egypt historical society museum okay i don't set the price point nor do i make a dime on any of the monies that are paid to investigate that location every cent right so like if i charge say for instance i charge rob eight hundred dollars you know to come in there, which is not, that's not the cost. But if I charge him $800 and he Venmo's me 800, there's a processing fee to that Venmo, right? Yeah. And when I transfer that to the bank account, I might only get 780, right? On that. I still pull out of my pocket the additional 20 to cover whatever the, new, whatever the historical society needs. Um, you know, so Take, I don't take any money off of that. And that was a big rumor that was going around. Dude, it's so, so small towns that, that they like, they yeah. like to talk and, and say, oh, this is a business. It's not a business. This is like a charity. I, we, we pay the money to yeah. go in there. This money is used to help upkeep the facility. Um, you know, and they understand that. Um, yeah. But for event companies, and I'm just going to speak from this from the outside and as a business person in general, if I'm an event company and I know a location is going to charge me $800, I'm just going to use that number, $800, right? I know that I at least have to make $800 for this to happen, okay? Yeah. Just to cover down what it's going to cost, bare minimum, to rent the location, okay? Mm -hmm. um, so I have to get, if I'm charging $100 a person, I want to try and get 10 people to go, right? That leaves a $200 buffer in there, one that will help travel that will buy dinner for my team that's going to help out and yeah. help manage the investigation right um because it's a service if i'm just going to try if i'm charging a hundred dollars and i'm just going to let people run loose in the thing and there's no coverage on that additional two hundred dollars and like it's not 
it's not worth it. You know what I mean? I would not go to an event company that's just going to let people run loose, nor would I allow an event company to come into New Egypt that's just going to let 10 to 12 people run free in the location with zero accountability, right? It yeah. just doesn't happen. No. So you're basically that extra money, you're babysitting all the people that are coming in there, right? Yeah. And you're responsible. If someone breaks something or anything like that, you have to be insured and you have oh, to be yeah. responsible for everybody that comes in there. Insurance isn't free. Yeah, call an there's insurance so company. Much, there's so much overhead to, to it. That yes, logistics and overhead, man. The and let's take it down to the bare, like the bare essentials. You need a website. Websites aren't free. The URL is not free. The hosting is not free, right? The design of it is not free, right? Uh, advertising. Maintaining it, maintaining it is not free. Advertising is not free. There's so many things that aren't free that has to be, you know, which is why most event companies have 10 to 20 to 30, you know locations that they go through w for the year because all that cost has to be supplemented out at at other locations right mm -hmm. so it's it's not even necessarily that it's about making money it's about making sure that the location gets paid if you show up at a location you don't got their money they're not letting you in right yeah. it's just not happening Any so, happening. yeah and you yeah. got man look anybody that opens a business anybody that files an llc anybody right that runs a business you have to make money the business business is designed to make money right if even charities even charities their board of directors the people that make it run they take a salary they get paid right and where do you think that money comes from the donations <laughs> that, that come in yeah. right so which is why you have march of dimes right for every dollar 10 cents goes to the charity 90 cents goes to paying for the organization yeah. Yeah. Right. So, so, you know, you have to look into all that. It's just seeing everything from 30,000 feet versus like right in front of you. A lot of people just don't, don't pay attention to that. They just think, oh, he's charging a hundred dollars to go to this location. I can just call them. I can just call the new Egypt historical society and they'll let me in for this. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you're still paying $800, right? At the end of the day, it doesn't matter. For, for us, it doesn't matter. We don't charge you per person. Right. You know, it's it's one set cost for the night. It's one set cost that you pay. I don't control that. The historical society sets that cost. And you have to make that cost. If you don't make that cost, you no come. No ticky, no laundry. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's the truth. And, and, let's be, and here's another hard truth that some people don't realize, right, is that not your location. Some locations see an event company, right? And they actually charge a little bit more in some cases. Yeah. So, um, yeah, you know, the, the other things they don't factor in, it's, and it's, is, you know, the equipment we provide, the food, the snacks, all those things you guys talked about. Um, so yeah, but, but you know, it was just, I was making fun of the fact that the term profit in the paranormal is, is kind of, it's kind of tabby. well i think i think the the separation needs to be you know a business and non-business yep. right like Agreed. a yeah. team a team that goes out right if i have a team of four people they're still paying the same amount of people as a team of 10 people it's the truth right and you just split the cost between the attendees the attendees right so yep. if it's mm -hmm. if it's 800 dollars, you have four people it's 200 a piece if you have if you have eight people you know it's less right obviously you know, oh, you yeah. can tell it, I know math. You know math. I know math. He knows math. I mean, you know, here, I'll, I'll share this. So, you know, so, here, I'll share a little bit of stop. I think it went right over his head there at first. Buddy. It did. Yeah. Yeah, for a second, I Rob was like, I, I got it, guys. Oh. Okay. I'm going to take this one away from the stage. I'll share a little, a little behind the scenes here. I don't do this for anybody. You better be wearing pants. Yeah. I got him on. You saw me get him on earlier. Uh, right. No, I didn't see him personally. No, no, you know, no, 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 no. I wasn't there. I'm in New Jersey. All right, everyone. Like you're up. <laughs> here's, just, here's just some of the advertising. I'm scrolling quickly. $180, $22, $150, $85, $50, $50, $130. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, advertising thinks, costs money, man. Yeah. Nobody yeah. thinks of this shit. Nobody thinks of this shit. They yeah, have no right. idea. 
Um, you know, and that's plus, just for plus, one. Well, right. And and plus, uh, the market, the skinny jeans market is really exploded, right? So the cost is just skyrocketed. Yeah, <laughs> it's hard. It's, you know, my pants are super expensive, super expensive. So get some custom, to... custom made, they're not skinny enough unless you can see <laughs> Rob's varicose veins, right? Oh, God, I want to see his heart, I want to see his heart beating. His heart, <laughs> you know, that's how I'm not looking that hard at his pants, Mike. <laughs> yeah, they, they, that's how they need to be like they need to be borderline skinny jeans slash Lululemon tights. That's, that's <laughs> oh my god, that, that's, where, that's where we're at, right? Oh, uh, you're an asshole. But all right, <laughs> holy shit, well, we're runs, on. You want to hear that? Glad I, sent, <laughs> glad I sent you that that link. Shut up, Cronin. Don't give Cronin shit to laugh about. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> uh, hey, Brandon. Um, but yeah. So so back to your mag. When when might we expect to see the next one? First week of April. First week Exciting. of April, we're gonna do a mass shipment of mass. all the ones that have sold. Yeah. Plus. Plus, um, so we were, you know, we were in talks with Barnes and Noble. Um, when, so here, I'll just give you guys behind the scenes into that business decision for Barnes and Noble, for us to work a distribution deal with them, you know, basically right now, currently we're doing a hundred percent of the work. We're doing our own distribution. We're doing our own printing and everything, right? If we're going to work with Barnes and Noble, they want to handle the printing and the distribution, but we would only make. I think the the end was 15%. Oof. But that's with us not doing anything. I mean, we still have yeah. to write it and design yeah. it. Yeah. But they would handle the distribution to go across country, right? All over the country, put it in everywhere, but we'd only get 50% of the profits. And that and they would create the price point on mm. the magazine. So if they had a cheaper production process, they would charge $12 a mag or you know, $14 a mag. And then we'd only see 15% of that. So I think we're going to hold off because we don't, you know, we're still kind of in our infancy yeah. as a magazine yeah. goes. So yeah. our, our stain isn't as big as we would like it to be. Um, so I think we're going to wait for a year, yeah. our year out, um, which would be October. Supernatural soiree is going to be our anniversary party. So Sweet. I think our January issue, we're going to go back to the table with Barnes and Noble Sweet. and try to negotiate a better deal. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. Question. I mean, when when you, when you get even more volume down the road, do your will your production costs decrease? They so right. So the production costs, you know, for 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 it to decrease, and and you're talking about a per unit price decrease, mm -hmm. right? So say if I ordered ten thousand units, right, our cost per magazine currently would probably be, you know, uh, six bucks, right? Okay. You know, so that's that's a that's a what is that a sixty thousand dollar run yeah. for us? If I did a you know a five thousand dollar run, our cost per unit would be uh, eight dollars. Yeah. Right. Okay. So so the number goes up, like the cost goes up with with more that you order, but less per unit. Okay. Um. So so I think for us right now, and this is our biggest run yet that we've that we've done because you know this is like prime season for Paracons. Um, yeah. We're going to be in a, in a couple of stores that that have agreed to carry the magazine. Um, Good. Penhurst gift shop is going to be selling the magazine. Yeah. Oh, nice. nice. And um, yeah. the creeper gallery in new hope, Pennsylvania is going to be selling the magazine. Nice. Um, yeah. So we're going to be in a couple places. Uh, we have a, we have a couple more locations we're talking to that'll hold the mag, but um, you know, we offer on consignment at the end of the day, you know, we just have to make sure we're making that per unit. Cost. you know number um on that but uh but yeah so this is our biggest by far we're going to be at penhurst uh paracon selling these penhurst is going to sell them in the gift shop we're going to sell them at our table um and then you know shortly after that we're going to be at the battlefield bash right and yep. we'll have a whole issue dedicated to you know gettysburg Right for the battlefield bash, yeah. and then uh, yes. and then you're going to see us at the Warren Paracon. Um, mm. We're going to be there selling. Uh, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, so we're we're like more in your face um, with 
with with us, you know, Great. versus you just hearing about it online and, and buying yeah. it, right? And look, I don't I don't think it's any coincidence that you know you have the most sales ever after a certain company was in your last issue. <laughs> I'm just saying, or, or after a certain company was not in the issue. Although yeah. it took them a month to realize that. Oh, okay. okay. Oh. Now, it was the delay. They're, they're right. trying to. Yeah, it's called it's called a, a so delay. They're, they're hoping for a repeat that they'll be in there again. Yeah, because they're like, wait, I, I better buy more of the next one this yeah. way, just in case they're in this it. way. Right. Correct. <laughs> Correct. <clears throat> um, right. No, we have some really great articles in this magazine. Uh, Penhurst is our cover. We actually go into like the history of Penhurst. So, you know, and it's not a, a big misnomer out there is that Penhurst is an asylum. Nope. Not true. Right not true at all so the history of this really sad tragic history oh um, yeah yeah how they how they used to treat like the state you know, school the, the developmentally mm -hmm. disabled and you know yeah. the people that society didn't necessarily want to deal with that's where they went yep was yeah. to places like penhurst uh but you know i think uh, the 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 pot of gold at the end of that rainbow is that penhurst the reason you know penhurst was ultimately responsible for many of the ada laws that are in place currently to help protect uh people with developmental disabilities yeah. right so i think one of the most shocking things for people is when you realize what year that place actually shut down yeah, yeah. not that long ago it's not that long ago <laughs> no, it's not. and that's right. just mind-boggling that we let something like that slip through the cracks for so long well right and and another thing is that you know, people thought that it closed down because people found out about it when it closed down. And and in all actuality, back in 1910, there were articles written about the deplorable conditions yeah. Oh, yeah. of the school, right? So uh, mm -hmm. you see what you want to see. You see what's right in front of you. And you don't necessarily yeah. see the things that, that you don't want to pay attention to. If it doesn't affect you personally, many people don't. We'll walk, yeah. right, walk right past it, you know? Yeah. So so mike were you able to like possibly interview any ex-employees or past employees from there for the magazine that would be in the articles that you know that you can tell us about or so um, the primary person we spoke to was the director of operations jim werner uh, okay or penhurst cool. yeah he was cool. he was our he was our um our point of contact for it for that? you know talking to some of the former employees or even and you know believe it or not like, there's still former residents that are still alive there was one right. there was one at penhurst at the at the paracon last year she spent a lot of time at our table yeah um i was talking to her for a little while it's crazy it's crazy yeah, it's crazy right. right and and you know when we went for the photo shoot for it um we were we were given like exclusive access to the entire grounds man and we got to see some of the some of the spaces that i mean holy cow yeah. right that how they how they used to live and and being like so close quarter right that it was just oh it's just nasty man like if someone got sick can you imagine if covid was a thing back then well so sort of like tuberculosis was a thing back then right or influenza yeah. was a thing so everyone was getting sick there was no there was no way to keep people from getting sick they were living that close together yeah you know Listen, you know, it's the other, it's the odd thing too. When we go to old hospital on college Hill, which if you want to come, Mike, come, um, where's that at? It, uh, West Virginia, uh, West Virginia, Williamson, West Virginia, too, too far. far, too far from Mike, but a lot of people there, everybody you talk to in Williamson was either born there, their parents worked there yeah, they, or, or was a patient there. It, it's, I it's, yeah, crazy. I love it's little towns like that. To where, yeah, I love little towns like that where you can just go in and just talk to people, yeah. you know, yeah. about it and you know, and, and get like the background. So Yeah. Yeah. Mike got to talk to, to the lady that that um spent some time at Penhurst. Uh so yeah, you know, and it, it does. You look at it and when, and talking to her, you're like, God, I don't even know what I should ask, say, not say, because you know how, yeah, how traumatic, traumatic it was for people back then. Yeah. yeah. And you know, Penhurst actually does, you know, they have a memorial preservation fund and they do like a lot of things within like a 10 mile radius of Penhurst for the community, okay. toy drives, food, food, food drives. Um, and, and they like to, they like to give back. So, you know, when, when someone, 
that used to be a resident there um, passes and they don't have the funds or the ability to have it like a dignified burial, they yeah. will help out. Penhurst, oh, Penhurst nice. will help out, that's which nice. is really, really nice. Yeah. And they actually just sent a former resident um, to an Eagles game. You know, not, oh, cool. you know, not oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they, they, he's been wanting to go and he's never seen one in person. And they're like, ah, oh, you're going. <laughs> yeah. You're going to cool. an Eagles game. That's really nice. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. Yeah, so that was really cool. You know, we so Penhurst was our, our main cover story for that. But we, you know, we have a we have Dustin Perry is in it talking about his his Do You Believe tour that he's currently doing, which is how that when that guy sleeps, I don't know when he sleeps, man. <laughs> he's just he runs like a machine, man. Yeah. Um, and then he goes to the gym. Yeah. Right? You see the size of his arms, man, or like yeah, he's gotta be he's got guns. Yeah. My, I'm wearing a black hoodie, right? So you can't see my black can't back. See my <laughs> back up here, just so you know. Are they? Yeah. All right, good. That's good to know He's too. Got the 22 inch pythons there, Rob. Can't you tell? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can see him. My see arms that. are like Rob's legs. That's right. Listen. You talking about the big guns on the battleship. Mike's oh, yeah. working good guns. <laughs> there you go. Oh, oh, oh. 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 that's Here's like a musket head. compared to Mike's arms, man. There's some, there's some muscle there. <laughs> <laughs> uh joe yes. apple was attacked in the uh tunnels the janitor i'm assuming you were in uh mayflower when when that went down those tunnels where the janitor supposed to be at man are fucking creepy bro yep. yeah creepy um actually the cover photo for um for the magazine was one of the tunnels in devon devon yeah yeah i guessed it i thought yeah. somebody else it. won Kaylee. Kaylee won Kaylee won um <laughs> rob relinquished yeah. the belt i did i didn't um, want it anymore um yeah. devon's a cool building i, I had, some, had some cool experiences there yeah we're gonna be um, set up in devon this year um april and ghosted magazine cool um thanks adam appreciate all of that uh rich get your ass out here uh we'll get you down to penhurst i'm only about 40 minutes north of it so you got a place to hang uh, you got a local tour guide right here. And yeah, I'm yeah, we also have uh, we have Ryan Buell in the magazine. Oh, your buddy, bro. He came at us for having Ryan Buell in there. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh um, Chris. Yeah. Out of Connecticut, Connecticut, Chris. Yeah. He's angry. Um, yeah. yeah listen, like you know, anybody that supports Ryan Buell, I'm never, I'm not supporting you. And I was like, I, you know, I, I looked and I'm like, you haven't fucking supported us before anyway, right? Like, so yeah, <laughs> you yeah. I bought a magazine. You're, you know, like you don't like any of our shit. Like, why would I fucking change anything for for someone that doesn't support us, right? No, and not to mention that if you like sit down and talk to Ryan. And he's one of the most open people yep. about what happened, right? Mm -hmm. And he admits to, and we go into it. I'm not, I'm not one of those interviewers that's just going to sit there and, you know, kiss your ass the whole time. I ask you tough questions, yeah. and and I, I want to see how you answer them, right? Because, you know, part of my job as as a journalist, and I hate even saying journalist, like I'm a journalist. Oh, but he's that's got, what I am. but he's got the press fucking decal up on the front of it. I get a press I have a press pass because I get fucking free parking. Okay. <laughs> it's like it, that's my handicap sticker. That's my it handicap. Sticker. But anyway, thanks Rob. Anyway, um, you know, talking to him, he like fully admits he's like it's like you have no idea. Um and the perspective of it, right? You're in college, young guy, you're broke, you don't have any money, and here comes this fucking TV show you know, producer, like, we're going to pay you to travel the world and investigate places and get you hotel rooms, right? And pay you. And they're like, fuck yeah. yeah. <laughs> right? And then when the show stops, everything's like taken away from them. And, yep. you know, I guess when you're a celebrity, it's, uh, it's, you know, it's easy to get used to, you know, all the attention and, and stuff, yeah. right? And, when it's gone, maybe you miss it, right? So he's falling in with the wrong people, got into some, you know, shit he shouldn't have been doing, and and you know, is what happens. And but he's on his, he's on, he's on recovery. Just celebrated uh, sobriety, seven year sobriety. 
uh, just oh, recently. Cool. So you know, big congratulations to him. That's a huge accomplishment. Yeah, it is. And, yeah. And here's what I'll say about Ryan and uh, Rich. We're, well, I'm going to watch you again tonight. How's that sound? Eli Roth presents the Legion of Exorcists. Um, Rich has his, his bringing his show over to the network, but you know, not last um, Phantasmic on the one before, I think, whatever it was, you know, it was the end kind of towards the end. I saw Ryan making his way around, you know, and this guy legit for real um, was stopping at every table and saying hello to everybody. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, mate, there might have been this little part of me that didn't want to like him, right? I don't know, but. <laughs> He came up to the table just because of the shit you hear, right? So yeah. he came up to the table. He's like, oh, he's like, oh, get haunted. He's like, I, he's like, I, you guys are, you guys are awesome. I'm like, like you don't know shit about us. He's like, oh yeah. He's like, you just did girls versus boys. This had to be last year. Girls versus boys down in William. Like he knew, and he'd been fun. I'm like, oh my god. So we got to talking. He's like, where are you from? I was like, oh, I'm up in you know Bethlehem. He's like, oh shit. He's like, I got arrested there. And I was like, what on airport road? And he's like, yeah. I'm like, everybody gets arrested on airport road. Uh, <laughs> he was very, very open and honest. And yeah. And yeah. He ain't hiding shit. He's like, yep. I did some stupid shit. I was on airport road in a hotel room. Long story. Um, and even later kind of joked about it. Um, you know, and you have to folks like you can't, you can't hold people to, especially things from years past you know people grow right. the guy went got his master's he's he's doing good I, he, I I actually, now. yeah yeah i was very very impressed with him. i liked him by the end of that short conversation and he didn't blow any smoke up anybody's asses that i saw so um yeah uh, but yeah there are people that hold on to things like that guy in connecticut who right just because we worked um with um you know, on the devils on the run tour and Ryan's doing a piece of that. Yeah. We are all lumped into the mm -hmm. uh, people are yeah, so, of course, so of course off kilter on some shit. Yeah. And, but you know, like, look, we're all like, we all fucking did some shit <laughs> back in the day. Right. Yeah, we're we all did. young and stupid, you know, and it, it, to me, to me, I'm not really caught up with what you've done. And I'm I'm more about like what you're doing now, yeah. And, you know, because there's a big difference in being a piece of shit and then turning your life around, or being a piece of shit and still being a piece of shit, right? Yeah, yeah. that's the truth, man. Um, this was a fun show. God, we're coming up on two hours, peeps. Yeah, Mr. Rob didn't even eat his lunch yet, dude. And it's going to take me an hour to hang my picture back up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but what else? So ghost, it's coming. We got the soiree coming. Sarah, hopefully is starting to feel better. Cause when Sarah's sick, nothing gets done. It got haunted zero. Um, now, now she's worried. She lost her spot on the way. Get to home. work woman. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Sarah. We need you back. Um, it's like, so I, I call April. Sure when I call I April. I call April. I'm like, get to work. <laughs> wow. At least, at least two times a day, she's like, I fucking hate you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, you're lucky. I get that like six. I'm always busting her chops, man. You know, nah, it's you know, so funny. She's she, she calls me and just bust my chops too, man. Yeah. You know, she'll call me at like one in the morning or some fucking oh. weird hour, and then like five in the morning, send me a good morning text. Right, like, <laughs> like when hell? do you sleep, man? When do you sleep? Yeah, absolutely. All these people, man. She's like, but she'll be drinking like a like a cappuccino at one in the morning. Too. Oh, that sounds good right now, too. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, hey, you're no better. Mike, Mike loves to send me early morning messages to tell me how fuck my life is. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> but they're a joke. I'm like, I send him messages and I'm like, oh my god. Did you did you just read what they wrote about you? And he's yeah. like, he's like you he's awake? Like, oh, fuck. Oh, I'm like, I'm just kidding. Wake up. <laughs> I'm like, now that you're awake, we can talk. You know. <laughs> uh, uh, it was only true once, but then he used that. He gets me. He, I'm like, God damn it, dude. My heart starts going. Trying to find my glasses. Get yeah. yeah. Fuck, I can't yeah, read this. Um, he hates getting messages from me because he has, he has no fucking idea. Like why? He, did, he why hears he me. If he calls, he hears me answering the phone. I'm like, oh god. 
He's like, what? Like, oh, what now? You never know what the fuck. Mike knows. Mike is. Mike knows everything. Mike somehow, like, I has. Just back. I just sit back and listen. He just yeah. has his view of the whole world, all like right in front of him, and he sees little shits popping out. It's fucking crazy. The turn, they're coming at him. Oh my god, he's like NORAD, the paranormal NORAD. I am. <laughs> um, all source intelligence. Gatherer over here, everything. I hear everything. He does. I know everything. He does. Speaking of, what time are you ending the show? Like you, you got like eight minutes. You, you like yeah, I got about eight minutes. Why? What's up? All right. What's like this whole conjuring house thing that was just you know? Let's talk. Let's talk about this. Oh. We're the only ones not talking about it. Are we? Maybe there's a reason. <laughs> we can, yeah, can you? We're getting, we're getting in trouble. I'm gonna get in trouble. Yeah. No, so so Jacqueline made a post yesterday. Um, really went to bat for you know Cody and Satori, and and I, I didn't think the post was bad. I thought it was a great post. Um, and then, uh, but there were parts of it that were you know just about you know really going in on a few skeptics that have been really you know yeah. on top of everything there and. Uh, and now they're all responding. So, hey, Adam, shut up because I saw you post on it too. <laughs> <laughs> well, I saw your post. Um, yeah. So, so you know, I, I just want to get you know my my aspect out on it. And, oh yeah, yours. This is this this view is solely belongs to Michael Castro of Ghosted Magazine. Yeah, and uh, well, the Jersey. opinions of Michael Castro have nothing to do with where Ghosted Magazine stands. By the way. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I retract yeah, that statement. They're, they're, they're just Mike, right? Just Mike, um, Mr. right? In my opinion, and I've said my opinion before. I haven't seen it in person, so I don't have any opinion really on, uh, you know, what Cody and Satori do. Right? It could be hundred percent real. It could not be. I don't know. I've never seen it. Right? Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's important to have skeptics. In the community and, and then there's i think there's a there's a very big difference between being skeptical and you know laying out your claims your skeptic claims on you know certain things mm -hmm. and then there's a totally other side of it where you are just openly attacking because you firmly believe in what you're saying is like the you know the bee's knees right like you're right. you're you're your shit don't stink. This is what I think that cannot be anything other than that, which kind of goes, you know, against being a skeptic, right? There needs to be peer review. There needs to be like, everybody needs to kind of have a consensus on, you know, the data and we need to get into it. Right. Um, you know, I bullies, no threatening, no, but, uh, I think we all know that it's for views, right? Especially for one particular channel. It's not a, it's not a, I legitimately am on a life's mission to make sure everybody knows that, that this is not real and they shouldn't fall for it. It is more because you can, you can, you can actively see it, right? You can go and look at this person's videos mm -hmm. and see that when he talks about this one subject, tons of views, when he talks about something else, not a ton of views, right? Um, so for me, that's a more of a, you know, uh, it's more of a uh, analytics point of view is where he's coming from, right? Um, yeah. But, but you know, I, I don't side with anybody in particular when it comes to this thing because, one, I haven't seen it, and I'm not going to, you know, go out of my way and be like, oh, Right. You got it. You have to believe everything. No, no, absolutely not. Right. Absolutely not. But you have to be open to criticism. It's just a part of the game. Constructive criticism is always a part of the, any game you get into. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, but you have to be aware of, you know, who you think your friends are and who you don't think your friends <laughs> are. Right. Like you have to be very, 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 very careful about what you co-sign. Yeah. That's it. Nope. Agreed. Your opinion for the day, and then I'll, I'll throw my last two. Like my my stance on this has been very public in the past, right? And I don't really have a dog in this fight. So, but I will say this: 
um, to Adam's Adam's point here. Um, agreed, but there's also there is also some some responsibility, right? And so, Adam, I know you hate Trump, right? And I know that uh, whatever the hell happened at the Capitol, everybody's pointed at at Trump in the past that he had control over that situation by his words. Um, and I think things, similar things can be applied here. Um, you know, there, there, there comes a point with any topic and, with, and let's be real here. This is not about people living or dying, um, literally, um, where enough's enough, you know, it's just time. Like, you know, you could call it ceasefire. You could call it calm down. I haven't seen that either. And I have seen the, some of the threats and, and the sexual sexualization of, of, um, Satorius. And it's sad, you know, the father of a daughter and seeing any of this shit about anybody's daughter or, or son, yeah. is, it's hard. Yeah, to watch. I don't, yeah. I don't agree with that. I think you, you, if you're approaching it, you know, from just a strictly factual point of view, yeah. right. Then that's fine. Once you start bringing again, uh when you start attacking things that can be considered emotional right oh then, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah once you start bringing emotion into it it's yeah. dangerous right um but if it's just factually this is what i think this is why i think it and um you know yeah right adam i don't think that that post was necessary at all but i think from a business standpoint there may have been a slowdown and she might have felt like it's, she had to address it, you know? Yeah, Mike, I, I totally agree. You know, and 90% of the time, that's what's happening. People do this kind of shit just to stay in the present and to keep their name out there. And whether the publicity is good or bad, it's just keeping their name out there for them. Yeah. So, you know, what's, what's interesting to me is that she, Jacqueline specifically, hasn't necessarily been at the forefront as far as presence goes, like social media wise. Yeah. So really to see her come out of the woodwork and, and post that was kind of, you know, just caught, I think caught everybody off guard and this is the reaction, yeah. you know, yeah. are, are you, you going to charge us for every minute we go over two hours? No, uh, no, I thought about. It. I'll talk to Julie. I'll get an invoice. Is Sarah, is Sarah messaging you? Wrap it no, up. No, no, no. Wrap it up. <laughs> just people are like, <laughs> yeah, look. You know, it's it's a it's a it's a it's a tough topic. There you go. <laughs> it's a tough yeah, topic. Yeah, tell them, tell them there. Wrap it up. Let me mute this one up. Um. Yeah. It, listen, it, hold up before before we before you go because I'm really really trying to keep us over two hours. Um, <laughs> is there I want to see what happens. I want to see what happens. We got 20 seconds. I met Cody and Satori in person at last year's Pair Unity. Wonderful people. Beautiful yep. people, amazing people, right? And that's as far as my opinion goes on them too. They're really nice, very respectful, amazing kids, okay? Yeah. That's that's where my opinion starts and my opinion ends. I have exactly. not seen their thing. I've never been to the Conjuring house. I don't even, I couldn't even point it out of a lineup if, you know, if, if I saw bunch of houses together i wouldn't even be able to tell you okay <laughs> but uh i just i don't think that that post was warranted okay 30 seconds over 30 <laughs> seconds over <laughs> again yeah listen you know everybody's got opinion on this one especially this one and and having been dragged into it and i have and pieces of it twisted and my words used oh, against we know me. we know where you stand rob a little skittish a little skittish about this whole conversation um because i don't need i don't need those those people coming back at me um you know based on here my the bigger problem i have with all of this and the things that are happening right now are you know people run with um one-sided stories, half stories. I won't even call them half truths because you know recent things for me aren't even remotely true. Um, and then there's the consumerism of it, right? So yeah. Yeah. back to the topic. You know, back to my point is, you know, if there are no consumers for it, then people would eventually shut up, right? But they know what happens. In fact, you know, when I was when I was attacked last weekend or this past weekend. 
they were on there like, oh my God, this is the most views we ever had. Like those words came out of their mouth. He, who were you attacked by? Yeah, let's not get into that. Yeah, stop, Michael. Yeah, let's not get into thanks, that. Thanks for coming by. <laughs> <laughs> I don't put him back there. Um, but that right there should say something. There's a problem out there. And if 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 that's if that's your crowning moment, then congratulations to those people. So in way to end the show, Mr. Michael Castro. Um thank you, sir. Joseph. Thank you for having me on, man. It was a pleasure. It was a pleasure. Mike, I'm glad. Yeah, can, I share, can I share what you told me yesterday about your kid? <laughs> yeah. He's a, he's a <laughs> <laughs> this has got to be good. This is yeah. how we're going to end the show. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah sure. So Mike's son loves to eat dog food. All right, so he's he's like skipping over a whole bunch of story here, right? He's three years old. My son is three. Oh, okay. He's just like he's learning. He's still like fucking wobbles and shit when he runs, right? Like his favorite thing is to be outside, you know? And, and so I put him outside. I go in to grab my drink. I turn around and he's like face first in the dog food, like. And I'm like, what are you doing? He looks up and he's got a mouthful of fucking pedigree. <laughs> and I'm like, what? And he takes off running. And as he's running, you can hear him crunching and chewing. And I'm like, <laughs> you know, and at the same time, I'm like trying to talk to Rob. And I'm like, this fucking kid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mouthful of dog food running around the backyard. You know, that's the thing. Seriously, if anybody ever wants to, you know, hem me up, just hide in the bushes out back with a camera and record my son out there <laughs> just running around doing fucking three-year-old boy stuff face first in a that's how this is how danger feeds his kid puts him outside face first in the dog food right oh, my dog loved it my dog i have a big um uh dutch shepherd she's a uh -huh. former police dog she's a bomb dog yeah. and uh and she just she's a mom right she's her name's nix she's like a mom so she like loves my son and, uh, and I'm sure maybe she was like pushing him toward, you know, oh, you look like you need to eat. You know? <laughs> Come share this with me. Oh, Holy man. Yeah. yeah. So, but as what he's describing story. it, I can smell Leo's dog food. Like, I'm just like <laughs> and I was like, I have a gag reflex. So, that was how I ended my call with Mike. But, gents, thank you. Great. It's 2.04. We did, no, it's two hours and four minutes. I don't even know what time yeah. it is. 3.04 p.m on a wednesday here y2k it's a myth we're still here <laughs> yeah 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 so this is officially the longest wednesday live ever uh maybe not i'm gonna have to we're gonna have to look well, now we gotta stay what the fuck tastes like horse um all right boys all right side pieces thank you all um sarah said i think this is for mike really this is uh that we have to write i will start not start new wars 100 times each so i don't think yeah, nobody's hey, starting a war i ended it sarah <laughs> nobody started a war let's see that's why i come on y'all's show to do it yeah yeah he just does his show like, right be like rob made me do it i don't know come on this is what you got talking about i brought you right into this um yeah. all right uh adam sorry about that here's a little spray you can use all right kids <laughs> You have yourselves a wonderful afternoon. Yep. I'm going to go make myself some peanut butter and jelly on an English muffin. Boom. Because I'm going to yeah. chef Rob, you up, man. Chef Rob, little, little yeah. peanut butter aioli spread on, you know, with some jelly <laughs> hand pressed. You know, it sounds good. <laughs> Comfort food on this day. I'm surrounded by sick people. So <laughs> I'm going to make myself some PB and J. There you go. All right, man. All right, guys. Thanks so much. Have a good one, guys. All right. We'll Peace. talk, everybody. Peace. Bye. Bye.